optical brightness by nature all of them are not bio like there are no optical brightness that are fully biodegradable which means that goes into the environment they are known irritants to the skin they are expected to stay on the cloth so they are expected to irritate the skin in that sense so we don't use ingredients like optical brighteners in our products as well so that was kind of one by one we went through each of the classes of ingredients and within that what are the specific ingredients that we want to put inside the product to decide and of course all of it needs to come together to uh, create a product that does the job of effective cleaning because without that there is no, not going to be any consumer preference or consumer action on that uh, while it being safe for the consumer as well as for the environment. Hi, wherever you're joining us from, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Tech Conversations, where we bring you insights from tech entrepreneurs, CXOs and investors. I'm Hari Arakli, and in this episode, Nimit Dhokai, co-founder of Happy Planet, talks about how he and his friend Mayank Gupta started their venture, determined to convert consumers to sustainable home care products that aren't toxic for the planet. Happy Planet is backed by investors including 100XVC and Fireside Ventures. In this conversation, Nimit also talks about how he and Mayank found a successful combination of effective products that also appeal to consumers' perception of cleanliness, be it their kitchens, toilets, or the clothes they wash in their washing machines, while sticking to their goal of producing genuinely sustainable cleaners. So uh, let's get started right away with a little bit about who you are and how you came to start uh, Happy Planet. Give us a quick background uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Harry. First of all, thanks a lot for this opportunity uh, for us to come, come ahead and kind of share more about what we're building at Happy Planet. So uh, Happy Planet is essentially a, a range of consumer safe, eco-friendly home care products. That's what we are building at the core of it. And where it all started actually for us comes from a personal story for me and goes back to COVID when uh, all the house help maids were on chutti. Uh, and one of the days my mom said, Nimitaj, tu fatta lagayega, right? And I was given the task of mopping the floor just like that. And honestly, before that day, I hadn't really done a lot of housework. And I was just handed over uh, a bottle of floor cleaner, which is a leading floor cleaner in India. And I was looking for usage instructions, right? It was just glancing through kitna dalna hai, how much to put in a bucket of water. And I happened to glance upon disclaimers that are there behind the pack. And I read stuff like uh, can cause skin irritation, allergic reaction, serious eye damage, highly toxic to aquatic life. And all of that is written on the back panel. And that was actually the, the genesis of why we started building Happy Planet. And no, it was not like a moment of epiphany where I kind of read that and quit my job the next day. But after that day, I just started reading back labels more and more suspiciously. And what I realized is a lot of work has gone on in, in the space of what consumers put in their body, which is food, and what consumers put on their body, which is beauty and personal care products. But there's very little effort uh, from, from large organizations to kind of clean up our act on what we use around us to clean our homes, clothes, dishes, so on and so forth. And even from a regulatory standpoint, right, there's FSSAI to take care of uh, ingredient disclosure on food. Similarly, there's FDA to ensure that the right ingredients go into our beauty products. But there's no such regulatory activity. In fact, even ingredient disclosure is not mandatory in India on home care products at this point in time. How long ago was this that you started thinking about all this? You start look at the label and you realize probably two and a half, three years back is when kind of first stumbled upon this uh, mm -hmm. and and kind of decided that something should be done about it. Right? What were you doing at that time? I was working at PNG. Uh, okay. and I was running their Whisper business there. Oh, okay. Um, tell us a bit about, uh, just a little bit of background where you went to college. Uh, so I, I did my engineering from Mumbai University. Uh, after that, worked for a couple of years and then uh, did my MBA from SP Gen. Uh, went to PNG right out of campus. Uh, started in sales, did a couple of sales assignments in uh, India and in Myanmar. Then moved to the marketing side of things. Uh, did a trade marketing assignment. Uh, which was kind of a bridge between branding and sales uh, eventually moving to more brand focused roles did one new product development assignment and then finally uh, leading the business delivery for whisper in india okay. and my co-founder mayank he also comes from uh, png background so he is a 2018 iit delhi pass out he also joined png right out of campus and both of us met there and it was i think jan 22 when we first seriously sat down and said okay let's evaluate this idea 
and by July 22 we were commercially selling the products. Mm. You're both from Delhi, are you? No, I'm from Bombay. Mm. He's from Delhi. Did you try anything before Happy Planet? A uh, couple of small things that I was kind of dabbled my hands at, but nothing very very serious before this. Okay. How old are you? I'm 36 now. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, come back to Happy Planet. Um, yeah. So you this this got you on this track. Um, from this point onwards to your first product, give us a sense of what happened. After that, it was like I said, right, it was not a moment of epiphany. I was just reading back labels more and more suspiciously. And this whole realization of work needs to be done in the home care space starting hit, started hitting me. Uh, we started looking at what are the different options that are available. What are the first of all, what are the ingredients that go in, right? So what are the main classes of ingredients that go into a cleaning product? So it's surfactants, disinfectant, uh, fragrances, color preservative so on and so forth where are the op where are their opportunities to clean up the product why are large companies not doing this started meeting manufacturers to understand uh, what can be kind of done differently uh, to provide products that are safer both for consumers as well as for the planet uh, and in that journey somewhere in that journey uh, we also started thinking very seriously about our packaging choices right so we were thinking about we want to make a cleaner product but if you're going to ship them in plastic bottles at the end of the day it kind of beats the purpose and doesn't bring the story home for the consumer. So we started working on a different packaging idea as well. And if you would have seen our packaging, we basically use paper-based cartons that reduce the plastic footprint also up to 90% versus using traditional bottles uh, that kind of uh, most of the large product, large company products come in. Can you walk me through a little bit of the research that you did into, uh, you know, with the idea of, uh, an effective product in mind, but that is also planet friendly. What are some of the things uh, that you discovered in terms of technical challenges uh, and then how did you overcome them? Got it. So, like I said, right, we have to start with what are the main classes of products that, classes of ingredients that go into each of these products. I'll go through one of each one of them one by one. Starting with the biggest one, which is surfactant, right? The job of the surfactant is to kind of uh, encapsulate the dirt while uh, you put it on, on the substrate, substrate could be a cloth, uh, could be dishes, could be the floor, anything, but just to kind of encapsulate the dirt and then it will be washed away with water. Most of the mainstream companies that operate, they sell petrochemical based or they use petrochemical based surfactants, which may or may not be fully biodegradable. And uh, a second issue within that is some of the uh, surfactants ha can have uh, carcinogenic byproducts as well. For example, SLES, uh, has a has a byproduct as part of manufacturing which is called 1,4-dioxane which is a known carcinogen. So staying clear of petrochemical surfactants as well as plant-based surfactants that could probably have pollutants in them as part of the manufacturing process. That was the first step for us. Second, uh, coming to uh, other additives that go into the product, right? So uh, probably a disinfectant. Uh, one of the largest disinfectant that's used in the industry today is benzyl conium chloride. Of course, it's effective but it's also over-engineered in the sense that it's very, very, very toxic to aquatic life, right? And products that use benzyl conium chloride as the key ingredient, you will see that kind of disclaimer. They have to put that on the packaging that it's toxic to aquatic life. So we kind of decided we'll steer away from these kind of heavy disinfectants, but we will play the disinfection game using uh, uh, essential oils like neem extracts or citronella oil, so on and so forth. Then comes ingredients like fragrances, colors, uh, which don't have a direct active role in the cleaning process uh, but are still important from a sensorial point of view to the customers. Now when it comes to these ingredients, again uh, we use food grade colors for example which are significantly safer for consumers and also when it comes to fragrances we only use IFRA certified fragrances. What that means is these fragrances have very 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 little probability of causing uh, skin irritation, allergies etc. So these are the kind of choices that we made across the different classes of ingredients and then also certain ingredients that don't play an active role in cleaning. So for example, leading detergents are something called as optical brighteners. What optical brighteners are is essentially they are dyes and the way that product is designed, right, it's expected to stay back on your cloth because these optical brighteners will then reflect certain wavelengths of light to make your clothes appear uh, bright and clean. They, are, they actually don't clean the product, clean the cloth per se, right? They just give uh, the perception of the clothes being bright and clean because they reflect certain wavelengths of light. Optical brighteners by nature, all of them are not bio, like there are no optical brighteners that are fully biodegradable, which means that it goes into the environment. 
they are known irritants to the skin they are expected to stay on the cloth so they are expected to irritate the skin in that sense so we don't use ingredients like optical brighteners in our products as well so that was kind of one by one we went through each of the classes of ingredients and within that what are the specific ingredients that we want to put inside the product to decide and of course all of it needs to come together to uh, create a product that does the job of effective cleaning because without that there is not going to be any consumer preference or consumer action on that uh, while it being safe for the consumer as well as for the environment mm. so today which are the most important categories of products that you have uh, tackled where you have products in the market so we currently operate in six product categories uh, for the home care there's toilet cleaner and floor cleaner in laundry care there's laundry detergent fabric conditioner in kitchen care there's dishwash liquid and in the personal care space we have a hand wash liquid and uh, so these can be used for example in in laundry care can people use them in their washing machines yes so the product is designed for uh, washing machines primarily for both top load and front load washing machines mm. and you must have done tests in terms of how effective your products are in comparison with the conventional ones yes. that people use um, give us a sense of what you found and how good they are so in terms of performance we've seen that all the products and that's one of the part of the product research also that we kind of take into consideration the product needs to perform at par Uh, with the market leader brands because otherwise like i said there's going to be no uh, consumer preference like imagine i'm coming and telling you this is a safe detergent like in is a dag nahi jayega mm-hmm. you're going to be like i don't want this right so it's very very important while we design the products that said there are certain ingredient choices that leave probably some gap in in the in the in the effectiveness or the uh, perception of effectiveness for example like i said optical brighteners because we don't use optical brighteners uh despite removing all the stains the cloth may appear slightly brighter when washed with a mainstream detergent as compared to a happy planet mm. uh, similarly for toilet cleaners we only use organic acids in our product uh, we do not use uh, corrosive acids like hydrochloric acid which is the mainstay of toilet cleaner industry what that does is our products uh, remove uh, uh, a kind of organic stains very very effectively but for example sometimes there are rust stains uh, in the pot right our product will not be able to remove those rust stains whereas a hydrochloric acid product probably removes and these are the challenges that as entrepreneurs we need to tackle uh, find a product that even solves these problems while sticking to our tenets of uh, safer ingredients for the consumer as well as mm-hmm. for the environment mm-hmm. in terms of your startup journey uh, tell us a bit about any important milestones over the last 12 months so uh, the way we kind of started out right and uh, it's 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 been a journey in terms of uh, identifying a few uh, important aspects of the business uh, that become the foundations uh, of of how the how we kind of build the business right uh, as you see from the name uh, happy planet we are kind of building something that's safer for the consumers and for the environment uh, our initial war cry was uh, good for the planet great for your home uh what we slowly realized is in this space consumers are looking for efficacy while our product does the same job that it used to do uh, 12 or 15 months back we've kind of moved our positioning to talk more about effective cleaning that's powered by nature because if you don't talk about efficacy front and center to the consumer they're not willing to make the shift it can be good for them good for the environment but does it clean my shirt does it clean my plate that's the biggest inhibition that the consumer has so we had to kind of uh move our positioning or our our kind of uh, usp conversation to the consumer to ensure that they are interested in what we are kind of bringing to them despite having the same physical product offering that does, has the same benefits for the consumer in the environment so how consumers perceive benefits and what really works uh, for them to make an action or make a switch is something that we realized and we made those changes along the way uh the second thing because uh, home care products are a low involvement category price discovery was a very important process for us uh looking at what kind of premium consumers would be willing to pay so all of these plant based ingredients typically are slightly more expensive than the petrochemical ingredients uh are consumers willing to pay a premium if yes how much premium are consumers willing to pay and that price discovery journey has been quite interesting for us uh we believe that uh, and that's been our endeavor as well to bring the pricing indices closer to a 1.1 or a 1.2 price versus uh, where the mainstream brands would sit we've successfully cracked that for some of the categories like dishwash liquid and we are continuously making efforts to get closer to that benchmark on the other categories as mm-hmm. well 
what are the most important reasons that it's a little bit more expensive so it's just the uh, so there are two parts to it right one as a startup for us the scale plays a very important role and as we have scaled over the last one and a half years we have been able to get the prices down from 400 rupees a liter to anywhere between 250 to 300 rupees a liter already in the last one and a half years of the journey and uh, the second part of it by inherent nature of these ingredients they are slightly more expensive because of uh, the kind of raw materials that they get derived from for example the surfactants that we use come from uh, uh, coconut oil uh, which is slightly more expensive when it comes uh, to a comparison versus a, a petrochemical derived surfactant when did your products first come onto the market um, where can people buy them typically and uh, after that maybe you could also give us a sense of how you're doing today as a business okay so uh, we started in july 2022 Uh, we've been doing this for about uh, 20 21 months now uh, you can find our products on our own website on marketplaces like amazon uh, on gro- e grocers like big basket etc uh, recently we've also forayed into offline retail and you can find us in uh, select reliance signature stores in delhi bangalore uh, and mumbai so we are on track for doing about 42 lakhs this month uh typically we've seen that we've grown at a uh, about a 10% month on month growth rate and that's kind of what we are trying to consistently keep active uh, as we go hmm. i know it's very very early days and and i'm not very clued into how long it takes a consumer a home care product company to become profitable but what is that sort of pathway for you like so when it comes to profitability right there are two layers to look at it one is the structural profitability or cm1 as as they call it the contribution margin what we have always ensured is we operate at healthy contribution margins because even with scale repeat rates etc that that part of the cost remains fairly stable and hence operating at a healthy structural margin is something that we've taken a very conscious call right from day one and we continue to do that in all our pricing and input cost choices Uh, and it com- coming to the bottom line profitability right consumer businesses are uh, built on repeat repeats are the holy grail of profit uh, i don't think even large companies for that matter make profit on the first product that they sell to the consumer it's about uh, how many times the consumer is repeating and what is the consumer lifetime value of that particular consumer uh, so yes it takes like to operationally break even on an ebitda basis uh it it could take really long for a business like that probably a couple of years to kind of break even uh but it's very important to operate with healthy very healthy structural margins uh while you continue to create demand uh, uh in in a way that your consumer lifetime value over a longer period pays 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 for the acquisition cost uh we we feel confident that our business model is sustainable because Uh, what we've seen is our consumer lifetime value on a 6 month basis for a repeater for example is close to 10000 rupees and for a 12 month is close to 20000 rupees so the consumers that come back and repeat us buy 20000 rupees worth of happy planet products over a year and we are able to do that because there is a large offering or a large bouquet of six products right so once the consumers understand the benefit that they're getting from the brand they would they probably have started out with one or two categories but then they adopt four five six different categories in their household that allows us to uh, kind of break even commercially much much more faster mm. so in terms of uh, funding have you guys raised some money um, and what's the latest on that so we've done uh, two rounds of funding so far we received one uh, first round of our funding in march of 23 uh, which was from uh, a vc called 100x mm-hmm. and recently we've just announced our latest round uh, which we closed with fireside ventures mm. did you use their safe notes or something for 100x <laughs> uh yes for 100x we went through their safe okay. notes overall how much funding have you raised so our first round was 1.25 crores and the second round that we raised is 8 uh, and a half crores and and over the next 12 to 18 months what are some of your biggest priorities give us a sense of your plan got it so there are two big buckets right one the growth engine needs to continue so the channels products that are working for us we will continue to grow on them and build on them significantly faster uh, and the second part is as a startup we have to continue to innovate right so we are mounting project projects across different uh, spaces uh, on what f- new products can we bring to the consumer that stick with or that that are kind of in line with our philosophy to provide effective cleaning that's powered by nature so what are the new product categories where we can bring in more consumers 
uh, what are the new channels for example quick commerce is an emerging space we are evaluating quick commerce as a space does it make sense for our product categories to kind of go out there and mount projects uh, on channels as well uh, similarly like i said we started going offline we want to improve the uh, physical availability of products and accessibility of our products so more and more consumers can find them easily so these are some of the key priorities that we will work in over the next 12 to 18 months manufacturing wise do you do it centrally and then distribute it on a network or uh, would you have sort of uh, close to the uh, regional markets manufacturing hubs and things like that how does it work so at this scale uh, we are operating from two facilities so different products are split in different facilities one contract manufacturer is in ahmedabad one is in pune and they make some of our products uh, but as we scale yes because it's a bulky product as we scale it will become more and more important to have regional hubs on production uh, because it uh, reduces uh, on the commercial side it reduces costs uh, which kind of helps us bring down the price for the consumer as well and from an uh, from a sustainability standpoint because it's a bulky product the lesser transportation that we have to do uh, the better it is from a carbon footprint standpoint as well mm. and and will you need more money are you talking to investors for next rounds of funding so an entrepreneur is always raising like they say right <laughs> but on a serious note yes we are talking uh, to to investors always uh, kind of engaging to uh, bring the story out in terms of what we are building at this point immediately we are not in the middle of a fundraise we are not looking to raise we have sufficient runway for next 12 to 15 months and we are focused on uh building the business like i said right ensuring that the growth engine continues to uh, reach more and more consumers as well as mounting projects that allow us to identify what the next s curve of growth is going to be and that's the focus for next 12 to 15 months can you tell us a bit more about what sort of um, compelled you to become an entrepreneur i mean it's at the end of the day of course there's a lot of today there's a lot of glamour around startups even in india but uh it it is risky and it's very tough um, um, so what got you thinking about doing this uh it's the joy of creating something very honestly and uh, it dates back actually to the cultural festival of my engineering college right i was i was like any other kid studying in college doing some extra curriculars and uh, thinking about where i'm going to get placed but <laughs> in the third year uh, when when we kind of put the whole show together the whole cultural festival together uh, the after the last event right uh, i think i was almost teary eyed because i really enjoyed that experience of creating something as a team uh and I, th- i think that day is when i had kind of thought life mein kuch aisa karenge that we are creating from scratch that becomes our legacy and that joy of creating something uh that's been around like in my head for more than 10 12 years now but finally found the right calling uh, very very recently uh, to build something of my own